So when Stephen Curry captured his fourth NBA title, he began to enter a different realm among the many NBA legends that you could even go as far as making a valid argument that he's entered top 10. He was able to knock down certain narratives that might have been forgotten about as far as him winning not only NBA Finals MVP, but just being that player that can carry the Warriors all the way through the playoffs. And not only he dispelled those notions, he was able to capture an NBA title after being an underdog and having Andrew Wiggins as his second best player and Otto Porter Jr. starting the last three games of that series. That's why I said this is the point where Stephen Curry began to enter certain parts of the NBA hierarchy, which is rarefied air. And he did this at a time where the Golden State Warriors were going through ups and downs with other key contributors on the roster, getting hurt, dealing with injuries, getting older, and he was able to revamp his body coming back stronger and adding new elements to his game. And one of them being the fact that he was strong enough to even back down Al Horford and get into the paint. He was already a good finisher with the left and right hand going to the rack. But when he added the strength to it, it brought him up to a whole new level. Now in today's current NBA media landscape, it is very rare for certain pundits to actually give players their props because of the sports debate culture in which media members now pick a side the same way the political pundits pick a side. But Colin Cowherd gave Stephen Curry the proper praise. And this is one of the very few times we've seen a media personality actually give Curry his proper praise with correct context. You guys check it out. And every once in a while, I'll check in. You know, we pay so much attention and probably should to LeBron's greatness, age, and longevity, we forget Steph's 36 very soon. Is he the anti-LeBron in many forms? Built a dynasty with his first team. Super loyal to friends and relationships. Finesse over power. Shooting over driving. Leaves oxygen in the room for others. And that right there is an underestimated part about Stephen Curry. Similar to Dwayne Wade, he left room for Kevin Durant to come to Golden State and shine. There are not too many players on Steph's level that would ever make that sacrifice. And it goes the same way for Dwayne Wade, an NBA Finals MVP, Mr. Miami himself, stepping aside and letting LeBron come to Miami in order for them to achieve team success. The top superstars in the league definitely have to have an ego in order to get to that level. And just them having the humility to put team success before their individual accolades is very underestimated. Doesn't have to always be the number one guy. Just think about what he has dealt with this season, Steph Curry. Draymond Green, long suspension. The death of an assistant coach. Andrew Wiggins, another personal leave. The drama of Klay Thompson going to the bench. Chris Paul arrives, Hall of Fame guard, uh-oh, and then misses a big chunk of the season. Bob Myers leaves as a beloved general manager. He's also trying to connect two generations, two of their best young players, 21 years old, and then you got Draymond, Chris Paul, him. And Jonathan Kaminga is definitely coming for a spot on that roster. He's made it well known, calling out Steve Kerr during the regular season about his playing time. They got young pups on that team that are starving to play with Curry. And here's Steph, 27 a game, cool as ever, shooting 41% Wow, 41% from three. And this is Curry moving off ball, running around nonstop at the age of 36. He's in tremendous shape. He's doing what Ray Allen used to do or Reggie Miller. Just all that running through screens, cutting all that off ball movement, while at the same time carrying the scoring load for this team. As Andrew Wiggins had, had one hell of a fall off. One hell of a fall off. I mean, for anyone to win a championship with that guy being your second best player, that's a feat in itself. On threes, drama has surrounded him forever, even when he first got there. Do you keep Steph, Monte Ellis? He creates the Splash Brothers. The KD comes, KD leaves. The Draymond stuff, the changing of the guard, Mark Jackson to Steve Kerr, none of it phases him. He's never frazzled and remains the absolute rock, foundational piece, the steady soul of this great franchise. Now, with the Warriors, this franchise is very interesting because Steph by far is the most talented. But 
All these guys kind of serve a purpose. Clay Thompson, his selflessness is very important here. The fact that he's never really complained about being the wing guy. We've seen legendary players like Scottie Pippen now all of a sudden bitch and moan about his insecurities of potentially being an afterthought or just a Jordan sidekick. But Klay Thompson has played into his role, even though he's good enough to be the key guy on a lot of teams during his prime. He is the enforcer of this team. Every team needs a guy like Draymond, the rah-rah guy, the guy that's going to call everyone out when they're fucking up, including himself. Just a person to bring out the emotions of this team. And make no mistake about it, forget Draymond's stat line. He is a bona fide first ballot Hall of Famer. His defense, his basketball IQ, the way he organizes the switches on screens, his shit is all time, man. That's why I say this team has a very unique makeup. The puzzle of the Golden State Warriors could never be fully complete, missing any one of these guys. Once again, the talent of Stephen Curry, the emotion, swagger, and defensive intelligence of Draymond Green, and finally, the selflessness of Klay Thompson, never complaining about his role, being a great two-way wingman for Stephen Curry. Forget his superior game. The difference between him and other great guards, James Harden and Kyrie Irving, is a mile wide in terms of leadership, a get-it quality, self-awareness, intangibles. He's a remarkable player. You don't get any of this ridiculous, I am the man, put some respect on it nonsense. It's all about basketball IQ, working well with others, making things work, lubricating, not agitating, adapting, evolving, dealing with KD. He's had a lot of players with a lot of baggage and drama. Just look at this year what he's dealt with and hear the Warriors again. He's also never demanding on coaches. You know, I like LeBron, but he can be passive, aggressive, little drops in the media, putting pressure on a GM, an owner, or a coach. We've seen always trying to get guys traded on his team, looks them in the face, smiles, bigs them up, and then asks for them to get traded. Plenty of players. I'm pretty sure Russell Westbrook is one of them, D'Angelo Russell, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, that's that's LeBron's MO. Eric Spolster and down in Miami to get him fired the way he bumped into him. There's a lot that comes with LeBron James. You know, the half dozen times in L.A. And I think the four best guards I've ever seen in my life in professional basketball, and I've watched it since the early 70s, are Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, and Steph Curry. And he's the only one that could play with all of them. Get a Damn, Cowherd, you're not going to say Oscar Robinson? I know Oscar was on his way out, but all these guys you named are pretty much his babies, the same way Trey Young is Stephen Curry's baby or Kobe Bryant is Michael Jordan's baby. These guys were watching these players while growing up and they basically modeled their games after them. Along with all of them. You could put him on any all-time team. If he played with Michael, he'd be like, hey, I'll just run around. If you spot me open, throw it. Kobe was hard to play with. Steph could play with him. He worked with KD. KD can be a lot. Mentally, KD can be a lot mentally, but he's also another player that's a perfect fit into any team system. He doesn't require holding on to the ball nonstop, even though recently in Brooklyn and in Phoenix, sometimes they have him playing that uh, point forward role a little bit too much. He should be in a more catch and shoot role. And I wouldn't be shocked if Stephen Curry actually wanted KD to stay in Golden State. That team would have actually achieved what the Miami Heat with LeBron James wanted to achieve. When he was like, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. He was trying to get six rings in Miami. KD going to Golden State was a perfect fit. And they could have definitely achieved that. Got along great. He gets along with everybody. And that's an underrated skill. I love LeBron. Think he's the all-time best at doing great things across the board. But there are some things about Steph I strongly prefer. And last night... Another classic performance. The band is finally all back together. They add Chris Paul. It's a new GM. The death of an assistant. Clay comes off the bench. Young kids everywhere. And they're blowing out Milwaukee. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to be said about Steph. Yes, indeed. But when it comes to Stephen Curry, the conversation around him will be very interesting 
as he inches closer and closer to retirement because make no mistake about it he is definitely in rarefied air and when you compare him to the other legendary point guards guys like magic johnson and isaiah thomas you're gonna have to put him up there it's actually gonna be more difficult to find reasons why not to have him up there so we'll see as the stephen curry chapter is not quite done yet he still may have more prime seasons left